When people come to me for help with weight loss, they think they enjoy food too much. They think they need to restrict the foods that they're eating. They're like, I like that food too much. I shouldn't be eating that food. I'm going to never eat that food again. Time and time again, the reality is, is that they're not enjoying the food enough. And describing the autonomic nervous system, you're going to understand why. The two branches of the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic branch and the parasympathetic branch. The sympathetic branch is called sympathetic because it's in response to our emotions. This is the quick fight or flight response. This is under stress. So sympathetic nervous system triggers our adrenal glands to secrete adrenaline, which is what, yeah, spikes that heart rate. It makes it so that our blood pressure and our heart rate go up and we're ready to go, go, go. In opposition to the sympathetic nervous system response, we have the parasympathetic nervous system. So the parasympathetic, that's against emotions. This puts a break on that arousal. Parasympathetic nervous system is able to slow down the heart rate, to return our breath rate back to normal. This is known as the rest and digest nervous system, whereas sympathetic is known as the fight or flight nervous system. Parasympathetic nervous system response rece releases acetylcholine, which really helps to decrease that heart rate. And this is more involved with things like, of course, eating and mating and finding shelter, very primal. It's very important that we're able to recover, recuperate, relax when we're doing these other types of activities rather than responding to stress. Think about it. If you were to restrict ice cream, not practicing food freedom, thinking to yourself, ice cream is so full of fat and sugar, it's bad, it's wrong, I shouldn't be eating this, this is terrible. Let's say you are offered out on a date and you're going out to ice cream. Your sympathetic nervous system response is going to go off. Your body doesn't know the difference between a threat like a tiger running towards you and a threat that you conjure up in your mind. Your body does not know the difference. So when you're holding on to that ice cream cone and you're having thoughts of fear, guilt, shame, regret, this is really going to make it so that that ice cream, instead of being able to be digested and metabolized properly, your body is going to spike up your blood sugar and your blood sugars are gonna stay way too high for way too long. And you're probably gonna store fat all around your organs and in your tummy because your body's like, all right, we're in a stressed out state. We've gotta save this as fat for fuel because who knows if we're gonna be able to eat again or what's going on. We just need to store this as fat right away there's a stressful situation going on. Your body is not going to be able to assimilate that and have it be just chill. <laughs> However, if you were to say, oh wow, fantastic, I'm so grateful. I love ice cream so much, this is delicious. And then you eat, 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 maybe you don't finish the whole thing, maybe you throw some of it away, maybe you do finish the whole thing and you're like, oh, fantastic. You experiencing that gratitude, that joy, you truly allowing yourself to enjoy that food being in that parasympathetic rest and digest nervous system response, your body is able to actually utilize those sugars that you're eating, right? Instead of all of the blood going into the, the muscles to move, your blood is going to be going into that digestive space and all of the insulin that's needed to help move the blood sugar into the cells is going to work properly. I used a continuous glucose monitor for some time and just being stressed without even eating anything, my blood sugar spiked like crazy. I remember I was sitting on the couch just chilling and then I was like, oh, I gotta get on a phone call. And without eating anything, within an instant, my blood sugar went from like 90 to 160 without eating anything. Stress really affects our, our body chemistry. Let's tie this all together with, okay, what is food freedom? What is stress? And how can we make this work for us? A lot of people think, oh my gosh, Katie, this is so crazy because when I, when I get stressed, I just eat everything inside. I do need to restrict. I really, really do. When it comes to these stressful situations, when you're in that red zone, press for time, relationship issues, your work obligations, it's all just stacked and there's no way that you can practice mindful or intuitive eating. You're just too on the go crazy. This is a really beautiful opportunity to practice even more mindful eating. So what that means is um, some people are 
feeling more or less empowered around using a tracking app. So I like to hold some of my clients who are comfortable with this accountable using chronometer. So you log your food on there. Maybe you can just have a food diary or a food journal. Like if you're really not able to be mindful about what you're eating, write it down. Write down in your phone what you're eating because then you can say, oh my gosh, okay, I've already eaten this, this, and that today. I don't need to be eating anymore. Another way, it can take 10 seconds. It can take five seconds to simply take a deep breath in and a breath out and witness, am I even hungry right now? Often when we're stressed, we're really seeking safety, control, comfort. We're not actually hungry. And this is when I prescribe primary food. So there's primary food. That, that's what feeds your soul. That's what helps you feel relaxed. That's what feeds your parasympathetic nervous system response. That's a good exhale. Exhale activates that parasympathetic nervous system response. Inhale is more sympathetic. When we inhale, you'll notice your heart rate goes beep, beep, beep. It, it beats a little bit faster because your body's trying to take in that oxygen. It's like, oh, and then as you exhale, it slows down. So with each exhale, get make your exhales a lot longer than your inhales. Take a deep breath, put your hand on your heart and say, okay, on a scale of one through 10, how hungry am I right now? What do I need right now? And often that's enough. And often when I do that with myself, I say, okay, I need a 10 minute walk. I need to go for a walk outside. Um, I need to call a friend. I need to watch some funny cat videos on TikTok. <laughs> like, what is it that you need to do to bring yourself back into that parasympathetic nervous system and seek primary food rather than actual food, which is secondary to primary food? So I consider connections with friends and family, time in nature, taking a deep breath. <laughs> These are all things that feed your soul without using food. And then secondary food is food that you utilize to nourish every single cell in your body. Those tools I really, really hope help. That's the tracking, practicing that scale of one through 10. How hungry am I? With this scale of one through 10, I don't want you to wait until you're a zero to one starving. Say, hmm, you know, I'm at a three or a four. I could eat something right now. And then eat until you're at, you know, a seven or an eight. As you're eating, definitely take a deep breath and notice, huh, I'm just noticing that I'm eating. First of all, a lot of people eat in front of the TV, eat while they're working, and then they're not able to utilize their fullness or hunger cues because they're just so distracted. So take it doesn't have to take more than 10 seconds to notice that you're eating and witness, huh, am I satisfied right now? Instead of just eating everything in sight. There's a lot of research behind that, that when you're distracted and you have more food in front of you, you're going to eat more. And last thing I want to say in this video, food freedom does not mean eat every single thing in sight. Food freedom means you have the freedom to choose. You get to choose from an empowered place. Yes, I'm so excited. I would love to eat this ice cream. I would love to eat these snacks. And food freedom also looks like, oh, amazing. I love snacks. I'm just going to have one. Or no thanks, I'm actually not hungry right now. You have the freedom to choose. You get to enjoy your food even more and you enjoying your food even more fully, fully trusting and 100% allowing yourself to eat whatever you want, whenever you want, this in the end is going to allow you to be in that parasympathetic nervous system response and actually get to an optimal weight. Let's make sure that the goal here is not to lose weight. The goal here is to create the best versions of ourselves. And I know the best version of you is not fixating on food all the time, is not focusing on your weight all the time. The best version of you is able to be grounded and balanced and set yourself up for success most of the time. And since you do take care of yourself from a loving, empowered place, being that role model that you wanna be for yourself, allowing yourself to step into that personality that yes, eats her vegetables, goes to work out, drinks plenty of water throughout the day, schedules breaks throughout the day so that you can have a clear grounded headspace. Focusing on creating and enjoying that best version of you, of course, the optimal weight is going to come. Of course, you're going to be able to enjoy an ice cream cake, an ice cream, a, yeah, a piece of cake on your birthday and an ice cream cone on a date, of course. 
And of course, you're still going to be able to achieve the optimal weight. No restriction needed. All right. No restriction needed ever. That's not the way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know below any tips that you found helpful and what you're going to implement. Hit me up on Instagram at vitamin.katie. And I uh, hope you give this a thumbs up. I hope you subscribe. And I hope that this helps you just enjoy your food and enjoy your life and enjoy your optimal health and optimal weight so much more. Have such a great day. You're amazing. Bye.